You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, your favorite pop and geek culture show where intros are hard, but we're going to give it our best shot anyway. I'm Sam. <laughs> I'm Josh. I'm S- hey. 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 Okay, you go. I'm Samantha. And I'm Cody. We have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, plus a spoiler-free review of Wonder Woman. Uh, But first, let's get into some things we've been um, checking out. I mean, I can go ahead and go if no one else is jumping jumping at it. Okay, uh, well, I had the chance to check out, along with Wonder Woman, um, the other superhero-based movie that was released in the past week, I had a chance to watch Captain Underpants, and it's super cute. I don't know how else to describe it. It was, um, for those who don't know, Captain Underpants was a uh, children's si- uh, book series done by a guy named Dave Pickley, or Peekley. guy's based out of Ohio. Uh, the movie's actually set in Piqua, which is nice. pretty, yeah, which is the same as the, same as the book, and um, it... You know, it's just a nice little kids movie. There's really n- nothing deep going on with it. Although it does have deeper themes of allowing yourself to be a kid and uh, happiness is kind of, you know, just in the way you perceive your surroundings. You know, you can make happiness out of whatever, which is ki- which was also themes of the book for the most part. Like being a giant bald man in underwear. Well, the whole the whole difference between being the the meanest principal on planet Earth and the giddiest superhero was just a, a slight tweak in mm. perspective, I guess. Like I watching the trailer, I, his his speech pattern kind of reminded me of the Tick. Yeah, very much so, and that is very very fitting. Um, Ed Helms is the voice of okay. of uh, Captain Underpants, the titular captain, the the, the good captain, the good captain, <laughs> and he he does a everybody does a really really good job in the film. Um, what's his name? Kevin Hart wasn't distracting as uh, George Beard, one of the two kids. Like they pitched his voice up just a little bit, and you could tell he was also trying to put on like a little kid voice a little bit. <laughs> and it uh, between the two, it 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 fit it fit the character. Um, like I said, Ed Helms was Captain Underpants and he was, you know, um, overblown as, you know, a, a stereotypical superhero kind of bravado kind of thing. Thanks, citizen! Yeah, a, a lot like that, yeah. Tra-la-la! Like that. Wow, that was really thing. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> Years of practice. They, they could have they hired you. They could have, Helms. yeah. So when they do the direct-to-DVD sequel... Yeah, I'm... Captain Underpants gets glasses. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. I'm <laughs> I'm right there. I'm in. Yeah. Um let's see they had Nick Kroll as uh Professor Poopy Pants, which is great. <laughs> which is his name? Which yeah. is his actual name? Yeah, the whole the whole plot of it is um what what they did was they took the first 3 books and they kind of mashed them all together into this to tell one big long story and uh Professor Poopy Pants is the um the main antagonist uh once we get over the hump that where the principal is the main antagonist and his whole deal is he wants to shrink the section of the, of children's brains that causes laughter because he's tired of everyone laughing at his name. (laughs) It's again, it's, it's simple. Which is professor poopy pants. It is professor poopy pants. I mean, (laughs) you could easily go to a courthouse and have it legally changed. Well, where's the fun? Where's the fun in that? Yeah. You gotta, you got and where's your childlike wonder, Josh? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Maybe he's very, very proud of his family name. Yeah. Which happens to be Poopy Pants. Yeah. And, okay. Well, so he makes a giant robot that looks like a toilet. Okay. Well, he, he, into he, it. no, he actually doesn't make the giant robot that make that looks like a toilet. The, um, the class tattletale and super nerd, uh, builds the toilet. He, uh, professor Poopy Pants just uses his, uh, enlarger ray to make it big. Oh. Mm-hmm. A big poopy the, pot. Yeah, the the Turbo Toilet 2000. <laughs> yeah, this is the level of joke that you'll be getting in this film. But it it's, 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 it's true to the book. It's very true to the book. It even ha- uh, it featured the Flipporama, which was a big feature of all the books, like the the flip book, like yeah. actions, like instead of having action scenes, uh, you know, the two kids pop up and say, "Hey, you know, these action scenes, these are pretty, these are pretty gruesome, violent stuff." So instead, we have 
the fliperama. <laughs> so it's the kids using a flip book for the for the action scenes, and that's and that was pretty for at least one of them. That was pretty funny. I think every Captain Underpants book I've read, I read um, standing in a bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, they're 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 very easy reads. Yeah. W- I mean, which isn't a slight against them or anything, but I I just picked them up and flip through them in a bookstore. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they really set it up for sequels, and I hope they get it at least at least one more. Hey, if the Boss Baby can get a if, sequel, yeah, that's very oh, yeah, true. The Boss, ba- the boss Baby's getting a sequel. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. It made like a bajillion dollars. Of course, it's getting a sequel. Yeah. Um. But no, I really, really enjoyed uh, Captain Underpants, and it does have a decent story. The animation was really nice. Um, I think I haven't looked at, I haven't done the research, but I'm pretty sure it's the same production house that did the Peanuts movie because it looked really similar. Mm. But they also flashed in uh, different kinds of animation. At one point, uh, there's a dream sequence where they're all sock puppets, like nice. live action sock puppets, <laughs> and there were uh, there were a couple other things here and there. Um, but, yeah, just really, really well done. I love that we're finally getting to the point where our CG movies are starting to look like cartoons instead of looking like weird Mishmash and yeah. 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 But uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have time at a matinee, check it out. It's it's fun, uh, especially if you have little kids because there's nothing – there's, like, pranks and, like, kind of – I don't want to say crude humor, but there's, like, little – very strict parents might not – appreciate some of the pranks that are being pulled in the film, but it's all in good fun. And I think it is lighthearted and kid friendly enough that it would be good for any kid. Plus there's enough jokes in it for adults like the, like the elementary school. And this was the same as the book, but the elementary school uh, was called Jerome Horwitz elementary. Do you know who Jerome Horwitz was? No, it's Curly from the Three Stooges. Oh, <laughs> that's, that was his real name. No, no, no. So, so you're, you're getting that kind of level of, of joke and, <laughs> You know they show it in the trailer, but it the joke lands in the film as well, which is um, surprising. The scene where Captain Underpants sees a uh, street mime, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh no, citizen, you're trapped inside an invisible box!" and like clocks him to break him out. <laughs> and it, I didn't think the joke was going to land because it's in all of the commercials, but it totally it, it worked. It was fine. It was fun. I must be watching different trailers because I never saw that in the trailers. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I, I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Best movie you'll see all year with a character named Professor Poopy Pants. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to see how many times I can say, say Poopy Pants. Poopy Pants. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't get show. to say this often on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. I guess I'm getting that part of my brain shrunk because I'm laughing at Poopy Pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, other than that, I really haven't had a chance to do much of uh, much. Who's next? I got the the Ratchet and Clank like remake because mm-hmm. I got it for like nine dollars on GameFly or something. Oh, that's worth it. And yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's it's fun. It's a lot. Well, not a lot different than the regular version, but different enough to where it feels like playing something else. I don't get it for cheap, like. I feel like a lot of the cutscenes, I'm just watching parts of the movie, but I haven't seen the movie, so I can't verify that <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay. I watched the movie. It was all right. The, would... the biggest fault with everything Ratchet and Clank is that they think Captain Quark is a lot funnier than he actually is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, I mean, it's just pretty good. It's a, I mean, where else are you going to get a 3D platformer this day and age that's not ukulele? Yeah, very true. Oh, did you see, by the way, Ukulele, did you see that they're um, working on the Switch version? Thank God. I, yeah. That's where I want to play. That's why I haven't played it is because I want the Switch version. The same same here. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, they uh, the devs tweeted out a, a, a picture of it running on one of their dev kits here the other day. So, yeah. Nice. It's, co- it's coming. I'm just excited because I saw they finally officially announced Sonic uh, Mania is going to be on Switch. I thought they did. Yeah, I thought that Not was Not originally. It. I guess originally it was Forces, wasn't it? That yeah. was on Switch. Hey, I'll play Mania on Switch too. That's cool. Yeah. I'll get Mania on wherever it comes out first that I can get to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Sonic OC Generator, a.k.a. Sonic Forces? Oh, I want that too. <laughs> I can't wait to play with that character creator. It's oh, be man. A good Just make, time. Some, <laughs> make some real monsters. <laughs> it's going to make a, for a great monster factory. Oh, it yeah. is. Oh, yeah. They've already said that they're going to do it. <laughs> That's excellent. 
Um, <laughs> did you say you also played a little bit more of uh, Mass Effect? Yeah. I know uh, I know. we talked about it last week, but... Yeah, I, I've yeah. put at least a couple more hours into it, and I still really like it. Mm. I don't... People were way too hard on it. Like, way, way too hard. Well, do you think maybe people were... Like your 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 play experience is different from most other folks because they jumped in on it before all of the patching and the fixing. I don't know how much patching they've done. Has it been a ton? Or yeah, it was a ton. Oh, it was quite a bit. Oh, that's probably why. That probably has a lot to do with it. But I just, I've heard that the gameplay is not good too. But it's fine. Everything hmm. is feels like Mass Effect to me. I don't know. Well, how would you compare it to like No Man's Sky? Because a not... lot of people were comparing that to. It's nothing like No Man's Sky. Because it's done? <laughs> Be- because there's, like, gameplay. <laughs> yeah. Not that I don't like No Man's Sky. I like No Man's Sky just fine. <laughs> but I didn't get caught up in the hype on that one. So mm. I went in there with expecting nothing, you know, with no big expectations and enjoyed what I got. Uh, and I came into Mass Effect expecting it to be garbage and to hate it and thinking that it's actually pretty good. Maybe that's the trick to enjoying everything is that you have to go in expecting everything to suck and then be pleasantly surprised when it <laughs> yeah, doesn't. It's not garbage. Yeah. Because we're about ready to talk about Wonder Woman, I think. <laughs> and I don't know. That seems like also part of why I think we might have enjoyed it so very, very much <laughs> other than other than it being just an excellent film. Before we jump into that, Josh, do you have anything that you checked out? Well, I really didn't check out anything other than nature ah hey nature's cool yeah nature's cool well except for the bugs yeah actually i i didn't really deal with many bugs it really wasn't that bad Mm. um we were doing gardening the other day and i just got eaten alive by mosquitoes it sucked well you know what did suck didn't it (laughs) (laughs) literally poopy Um, pants (laughs) 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 ah drag you got me pretty (laughs) sneaky cody (laughs) Slipping in that poopy yeah. pants. So anyway, you were in the wilderness. Was it just for your own health or benefit, or was there a reason sort behind of. it? Were you running from the police? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, if I was going to run from the police, I wouldn't do it through nature. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I um, as as the we are now in the warm seasons. That means uh, LARP season. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Amp Guard, the uh, LARP chapter I'm part of, or live action role playing, if you want to call it even though we're very light on the actual role-playing part. Mm. The local kingdom areas, we're doing our thing. We have, like, God, we have like crap ton of events, like a lot. But I've, the last two weeks, I've gone to two events every weekend. We had... <laughs> wow. Yeah, we had Valhalla in Springfield. Okay. It was uh, during Labor Day weekend. Or, <laughs> no, Memorial Day. <laughs> Memorial Day. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And, uh... It was good. It stormed really bad Friday night, but then it was just hot and humid the rest of the time. Mm. But it was a good time. Uh, archery tournaments, uh, running around the woods being stupid, hitting people. Nice, nice. Eating foods and doing lots of drinking because that's what we do. Sure, yeah. And then uh, last weekend was our Kingdom mid rain and the Kingdom of the Rising Winds is what we are. Is, uh, Illinois. That sounds like a fart joke. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> the kingdom of the breaking winds. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're also called the dump, the dumpster fire of the United States. Um, <laughs> online. <laughs> uh, rising winds is uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, a little bit of southern Michigan, a little bit of northern Kentucky, and a little bit of West Virginia. Mm. Got a lot of stuff going on. But we had our mid-rain, and rains typically last about six months. Mm. And uh, It's a lot of water. It's a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of rain. <laughs> Deal some flooding. <laughs> I mean, it did do that around here. But it, wait, yes, yes. <laughs> that that's been my other check it out. Is that my basement flooded? But anyway, let's continue. You and the rest of the town. Yeah, I saw uh, pictures. It was nuts. It was bad. It was bad. Um, it was a big event. Um, I wish there would have been more fighting in the wooded area that we have for uh the campground for this event, which is like two hours away, versus Springfield, which is like an hour away. Okay. But um, it was so hot. Mm. It was, like, oppressively hot. Ugh. Yeah. Like, no cloud cover, and all the battle games took place in open fields with very oh, no little shade. shade. Oh. Yeah, that would... And you're wearing how, much, how many pounds of armor? 40. 40. 
It was rough. Yeah. At one point, yeah. I had to stop and like peel everything off and just drench myself in water. Wow. Luckily, I was staying in a cabin. And I just stood in front of an air conditioner for like 20 <laughs> minutes, and I felt great. There we go. There we go. Cool. Uh, but it was a good time. Yeah. A friend of mine got his – finally got his way overdue Master Dragon, which is an award awarded for uh, art. Okay. All right. We have different categories of things. I uh, see. Sword uh, for war skills, dragon for art, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. Okay comes a time in every young boy's life when they master, master the dragon the dragon <laughs> oh, Lord. it's always a big moment I, into adulthood <laughs> uh, and then another friend of mine uh, achieved his achieved knighthood mm. and it was a we had a very nice ceremony and it was, you know I'm really proud of him he's been playing the game ever since he was 14 wow, wow. how old is he now uh, younger than me. He's probably like 23. So almost a decade. That's still really impressive. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah. Uh, he achieved uh, Knight of the Sword. Okay. Because he's very good at the fighting. Good. Cool. It was a lot of fun. It was a good time. Uh, food was good. Food was really good, actually. Mm, cool. It's always just a good time. You get a couple hundred people together and just hang out. And... Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. In the woods and field. Yeah, <laughs> I really wish it would have been in the woods. <laughs> Those, the woods they have there are, are are nice and plus shade. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing. So so did you win? Did you win the LARP? Um, are you winning? Are you no, winning? actually, I think every. Did team you get I all win. the points, sport? <clears throat> are you winning, son? <laughs> <laughs> no, every team. I think I'm pretty sure every team I was on uh, failed. Well, mm. Did you have fun? Oh yeah, I had lots yeah, of fun. Well, then that's, that's what's all important. That <laughs> oh yeah, I had lots of fun. Um, <laughs> a, we had a lot of games where my fighting company could come together as a group and actually get to play together, which cool. is something rare for us because a lot of our people either can't come for various reasons via work or something, mm-hmm. or they're actually like assisting the events right in uh, uh, various different um, aspects. But we, it's good because we. F- like my fighting company focuses primarily on group squad tactics, so oh well, there it's you good go. Times for us sounds like it. Very cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much all I did it was uh, hit people with foam sticks <laughs> and <laughs> in the in, in the, the field woods, in yeah. the field. Excellent. Yep. Well, cool. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's go ahead and take a couple minutes and get into our um, spoiler-free review of Wonder Woman. Like we're gonna go and not talk about any. I know we usually go into like you know light spoilers on stuff. This time we're not going to because everyone should go see this movie. Yeah, just go see the movie. Yeah, it's well, a really really good movie. About that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You haven't seen it. Yeah. Yet. Well, you can talk about it next week, probably. Yeah. <laughs> More than likely. Um, go see it. Yeah, Josh. It's amazing. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. I would have, but I was in, in the woods hitting people with foam swords. Yeah. I would and get then it. during the week, I work. I, I yeah. work and I've slept. Sure. No, I understand. I would. But uh, but no, Wonder Woman. It's <laughs> skip your job, <laughs> skip your go, job. Go see, see Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah. No, it was it was really enjoyable. You know, I am a big man, and I will admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, we were all wrong. We were all we're wrong all about this. Very one. wrong about yeah. this movie. Yeah, we kind of gave this movie a little more guff than we probably should have. In our defense, trailers didn't look great. The um, there was almost no advertising for it, which was not a good sign, and. DC Warner's track record was not stellar. No. Has not been stellar. Having said that. And that's I've, being nice. <laughs> yeah, that's being very nice. I am so happy to be wrong. Yeah. If I was going to be wrong about something, this was the thing that I would want to be wrong about. Yeah. So uh, what were some of your highlights for the film? Not Again, not getting into spoilers. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked the stuff in the first um, um 20, 30 minutes on Themyscira. Yeah, that was That was really good. Robin Wright was awesome. She was the trainer. She's not... um, I I originally thought she was Queen Hippolyta. Um, It's not the case. She was like... She's Wonder Woman's aunt. Aunt and like super like the the best fighter like on the island. Super, super great. Um, Robin Wright was um, Princess Buttercup in Princess Bride and um, Jenny... Was she, it, yeah, she was Jenny in uh, Forrest Gump. Jenny. Yeah. A movie I've still yet to see. Oh, Forrest Gump is very good. You should see that movie. <laughs> the book we had a garbage. podcast. The book is garbage, but yeah, the movie's yeah, the book's great. not great. 
But uh, but no, if only we had a podcast where you could watch movies that you haven't seen before yeah, that only. everyone else has. If only. Um, if only but, there was a new episode coming out soon. Soon. Yeah, soon. Very soon, actually. Uh, <laughs> any, anyway, uh, she did an excellent job. It's not Forrest Gump. It's not Forrest Gump, though. That no. might, might, might have sounded like the episode's Forrest Gump. It's not. <laughs> it's not Forrest Gump. It should have been Forrest Gump. <laughs> anyway, um, she did a good job. I think Gal Gadot or Gal Gadot. I'm not. It's Gadot. It's Gadot. Okay. Um, yeah, Gadoon. I, I've heard it both ways, so, yeah. Anyway, uh... Well, whoever she, said Gadot was very wrong. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, um, she did a very good job. I almost think that her comedic timing was as good, if not just a tiny bit better than her, like, dramatic, like, trying to deliver serious lines. All the fish out of water stuff was But that so was super great! So funny! Super great! And they did it without making her look like a doofus. Yeah! It was it was really really well done. I think um, Chris Pine was more uh, was shattering it up more here than he was in the Star Trek movies. Yeah, I think he was more Captain Kirk. He he made Steve Trevor not boring. Yeah, any any kind of Wonder Woman content I've come in contact with, whenever Steve Trevor is on the screen, I'm just like, you Who are cares? boring. I don't care about you. Like, stop focusing on this guy. He sucks. Yeah. Bring back Wonder Woman, please. Yeah. Steve Trevor was good. His uh, uh, band of other guys, they were all they were really all interesting. They were all very interesting and well-rounded characters. Um, yeah, they all had reasons for being there and backstories and stuff. Yeah. It was really, really well done. Um, more than Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, way more than Suicide Squad. Um, I liked how a good portion of this movie was not grayscale or muted tones. Yeah. I mean, the majority of it was, but there was a good portion of this movie where you could actually see colors. Like, the mascara was super sunny. Yeah. Greek, you know, Mamma Mia looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, I, this, uh, because of the setting, the World War One setting, I can give the muted color palette of the rest of the world a pass. Yeah. Plus, it helped make the Lasso of Truth really really shine out and yeah. really draw your attention like that was excellent the no man's land scene oh my god yeah I mean, that I was get yeah, we're not getting spoilers was, i'm not gonna talk anymore that was a super high point of the movie that was probably the highest point of the movie which i heard that uh patty jenkins the director had to fight for that yeah well with i'm glad she won that one Warner. because yeah. that's yeah um it is, it's the highest point of the film it, it really it is really shows you what diana is all about yeah absolutely now um there are a couple things that i did have a little bit of uh have trouble with yeah i, I mean think. it's it's not the per it's not perfect but no it's um, one of the best superhero movies that has come out in definitely like one of the better ones absolutely um for five years i don't know yeah yeah i would say since the original first wave of marvel things like i would put this up near the first captain america I mean, it's an easy comparison because it's, you know, partial war, movie. war movies. Yeah. But I well, I, th I think it's up there. I will say I did fall asleep during the first Captain America and I did not fall asleep during this well, movie. That's, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, some complaints I had. Um, the twist, again, not getting into spoilers, uh, the twist I figured out immediately. Yeah, it didn't have a whole lot of impact. I didn't like, like, as soon as there was a particular character that is introduced well, as soon as the character pops up on screen i'm like okay i know the third act i know what's hap i know how this movie is going to end and right down the line it ended exactly the <laughs> way i thought it was going to end um the third act was definitely the weakest yeah it it was very by the numbers it devolves into a cgi mess there near the end the way most superhero movies do these days yeah it, it it turned into a very textbook superhero movie ending at the end. This, you know, I, I was thinking about this last night. This is the most Marvel DC film that they've made. for better than the Marvel ones. For it's... better or worse. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has something that a lot of the Marvel movies, especially anymore, don't have. It does until the third act. The third act is basically just the third act of any Marvel movie movie felt so. like it had more weight than any of the marvel movies do though all the way up until and through the no man's land i would 100 percent agree with you that last that last 
20 minutes or so just kind of it was good it was fine but it didn't have quite the weight that i think if we would have gotten more of the no man's land stuff that's what i that's what i would have liked to see honestly but you know i actually had like a good message it does a good yes. part and good a good message well sure it does uh, um, wonder woman was actually a heroic hero yes the, <laughs> the first for the dc movies yeah she wants to help she people is a superhero that is doing superheroic things inspiring hope in others yeah wanting to help people no matter the the cost yeah anything else that i want to discuss with this film would get into spoilers so i can't really get into it but go see it go see the movie yeah 100 percent. go see this yeah, movie. yeah absolutely and if this is the direction that dc and warner is willing to take is going to take starting now at this point and moving forward with their superhero films i'm i'm in yeah i heard that they're doing three months of reshoots for justice league and i'm hoping of course they they're are making it wonder woman and friends yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hope yeah oh <laughs> same here i uh yeah they it, warner brothers seems like they're trying to write the ship a little bit they got really really off track with man of steel wasn't great batman versus superman was really not great but if this is them course correcting, you know. Yeah, at least they, they've seen it work now. They, they seem to listen to just where the money goes. Yeah. And the money went here. Like. And by by being better and by showing that they can also put out a quality product, it's going to force Marvel to be a little more innovative with their films. Because I think that's one of the biggest problems Mar the Marvel movies have had, especially since the first Avengers movie, is that they – have been treading water because they have no competition. Yeah. You know, they can, they can get away with putting out a seven and a half or an, eight, you know, an eight or a seven and a half or a seven out of 10 film, because you know, who are they going to go up against? Yeah. Suicide squad. Suicide squad. And like, I'm starting to get tired of Marvel's movies, honestly, because they've all been the same yeah. because they didn't, because they don't have to be different I because mean, they know they're going to make the money again with a, if they have, Healthy competition would not hurt the superhero genre of films, I don't think. I mean, Guardians was good, but there was just something, it just felt the same again. It was very <laughs> much like the first. I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed Guardians 2. Yeah, it was, really, good. It was a really, I really good liked movie, that movie but a lot. There was just something that kept it from being a, amazing like movie. A, yeah, what it could have been, could have been, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm not... I don't know if I, I thought I thought it was really good, but you know whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, healthy competition is only going to be a good thing for both sides, and ultimately for the viewer. I don't know. Yeah, in the uh, the sea of superhero films, you know, we need something fresh and new because I tell you, I'm getting burned out. Yeah, as much sure. as I love there's... comics and as much as I love superheroes. Oh, there's burnout. Sure. Oh yeah, I'm like, especially with as many movies as they've been putting out a year now. Yeah, I'm just like. Oof. Instead of spacing them out and trying to keep it kind of a special thing, they know that the genre is eventually going to reach uh, critical peak. peak or critical mass. So they're just trying to pump out as many as they possibly possibly can, and that's only causing the the burnout to go quicker. I, I mean, think. come on, Spider Man comes out next month. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah Spider Man is next month. Yeah, and I'll be honest, it looks like a Marvel movie, and yeah. and Ragnarok I think is. August. Now, Ragnarok, I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I, I, I'm in for that I one. I still can't believe they put uh, Tony Stark on the poster for Spider-Man. Yeah, that was <laughs> that that was a bad decision on on Marvel or Sony. You know, I'm not quite sure which. There's I don't know. probably an A and a B. Yeah. A little column A, a little column B. Yeah. If, <laughs> any bad decision made with Spider-Man Homecoming, I am chalking up to Sony. Sony. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Because who has the track record of making poor decisions with Spider-Man? <laughs> I still can't believe they want to do a Venom movie with no Spider-Man connection. That makes no sense. Yeah. That makes no sense to me. The same, they also want to do a uh, Sinister Six movie with no Spider-Man influence, <laughs> which is crazy. It's like having a, hey, it's all of Batman's rogues with no mention of Batman at all. It's like, so like Gotham kind of. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. And, and you see how well that <laughs> yeah. does. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a break here. And when we come back, we'll get into a little bit of news. 
Hey, we're back. That was the theme song to the old 1970s uh, Wonder Woman TV series. Which is still a great show. It's a great show and a good song. <laughs> no matter what anyone thinks. Josh. Gosh. I don't call me out on that. <laughs> you villains. You, you said that the Wonder Woman theme was, quote, boring. <laughs> well, it kind of is. It's not. It's classic. Yeah. It's it's very much a 70s TV show theme song. It is very good. Yeah. Anyway, also, news. Also has fun animation to it go does. along with it. Yeah, definitely. Very super friends. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we have a little bit of news to go over. Um, first up is a little bit of Pokemon news. We uh, There was a direct. Yeah, one um, of the live stream things that Nintendo does. Yeah. This time Pokemon Company did one. Mm-hmm. And it was overwhelmingly boring. It wasn't great. <laughs> it super wasn't great. Um, it was only eight minutes long, but it felt like an hour. Yeah, because they they always want to do like these live action trailers. Now, mm-hmm. ever since the Pokemon Go one was such yeah. a success, they do these crappy live action trailers that are like oh, trying to tell this crazy narrative or yeah, whatever about some. Dude backpacking across Asia to meet his brother and play Pokemon with him. Yeah. But and not Pokemon, Pokken Tournament. Yeah. The fighting game version. Which, this is this is how they announced that it was coming to the Switch. Which was a no-brainer. Yeah. Because that game came out late in the Wii U uh, life cycle anyway, so Very late. you knew it was going to end up on the Switch. Yeah. It still has life in it. They added a bunch of characters to mm-hmm. the arcade version that the Wii U version never got. Uh, the Wii U version never got, but the uh, arcade versions got four of the five. Because the arcades um, were updated pretty regularly. Um, the one that uh, no version has gotten yet was uh, Decidueye, the owl from um, Sun and Moon. I thought for a second when I saw it, it was Hawkalucha. Oh, that would be great. Which should be. It would fit. In the game. Yeah. Hopefully they add more characters though, because that's not regular updates would. Yeah, the 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 idea that that game does not have regular updates is mind boggling. Yeah, because it because the original base game only had like one or two arenas, and it only had like a handful of fighters, like and maybe nine, and that was basically well, no, it had like twelve or something like that. No, no, no sixteen. It had sixteen. There were a bunch that that were unlocked mm. that I never got to. Yeah, I, I played the game three times and never went back. Yeah, so I, I don't know why. I'll probably pick it up because I'm a I'm a Pokemon Mark and a fighting game Mark. So <laughs> as long as one of us gets it, that's fine. Cause yeah, it's fun to play you yeah, know, in a party in a, style yeah. environment. Yeah, but the Pika, single P- Pikachu is best character. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The single player doubt. left something to be desired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> hey, you can totally customize your trainer. Do, do, do. Yeah, I could put some cartoon hat. glasses and a sweet hat on <laughs> um, generic anime boy. I don't know. Along with that trailer, they also snuck in um, a shot or two of the updated version of uh, Sun and Moon, which is the Gen 7 game. Yeah. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Super lazy naming yeah. convention well, to go with a super, super lazy game. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Sun and Moon again, but the story is a little different, and they didn't say how. Uh, my guess is that they finished the game. That is, this is basically just the game that Sun and Moon was supposed to be, but they pushed <laughs> out six months early. Because that fourth island in Pokemon Sun and Moon was non-existent. There was. N- did you ever get to it? That's where I stopped playing. <laughs> yeah. Josh, did you ever get to it? Nope. There is nothing on that island. There are no trials. Well, no, there's one trial, there's only one town, the rest of it is just boring maps. <laughs> That's it. In fact, the uh, the other, you know, the other um, trial captains or trainers or whatever, every island has, you know, they have their own trials or whatever. And you get to that island, and there's a couple of trial captains on that island who just give you their special rock. <laughs> just give, here you go, hey, yeah. you made it. One of them's a painter, and she goes, well, I'm too busy painting, so here you go. <laughs> you win. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It was super, yeah, the, the the ending. How hard would it have been to at least put a Pokemon battle in there? Be like, okay, she's got these four. Yeah. Because they I mean, never have the full group. I mean, to be fair, you, you end up fighting her during the epilogue, like the post-game, con- the weird, chintzy post-game content that made no sense and came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it looks like it looks like this is the finished version of the the previous games, and I'm not going to get it. Yeah, and I I never get the like the one they sell after they sell the main ones. Like yeah. I never played Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I never played Black and White Two, yeah. and I don't feel like I've missed anything. You see, I I played uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire quite a bit. Actually, that's the one uh, version of the game that I finished the decks completely 100 percent caught them all which is something you can't do in sun and moon because there the decks doesn't have a national deck so if it's not natively found in the game you can catch it it's not going to do anything it's not going to add anything to your you know your total score so i bet like, it will now i bet it will now and that's <laughs> and you know that's fine i think the biggest problem with ultra sun and moon is that it is not a dual 3ds and switch release i think they're really really dropping the ball on it with this one. Yeah. I think um, anywhere else this would have been a DLC or a content update. Yeah. But because it's Pokemon, they'll slap a... a they'll, they'll put it in a cart and sell it at a full price. Yeah. For an update. Yeah. Again, I think the future of Nintendo's handheld market is the Switch. If they're going to go... If they, if they wanted... If they were going to build, and they did build a console that is both portable... And a, a home console, then they need to treat it as both a portable and a home console. They need to put their portable games on the Switch. <laughs> Don't. If this announcement had included, oh yeah, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are on the Switch, then I would have been excited. Yeah. But it didn't, and it was just full of old games being re released. <laughs> yeah, base. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's what this whole event was. Was. A bunch of old games being re-released. Uh, the other announcement was uh, the second gen um, Pokemon games, uh, uh, gold, gold and silver. silver, but not Emerald. Oddly enough, huh. no weird. Crystal. Or crystal. Yeah. That's what it is. They're getting re-released as a uh, um, virtual console, like the first uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow mm. uh, were, and they'll have uh, connectivity to the uh, Pokemon Bank, so you can get your yeah. your little guys up to the to the newer games. And that's that's fine. Yeah, Gen that's, two. I mean, that's cool. Gen two is my favorite. Gen two is pretty great, and that that game had the whole bonus content of going to the first gens islands after you beat the game. So there's infinitely more content for those games. It's just not that exciting. No, I don't. They could have tweeted a couple of pictures from the official Pokemon Twitter account. Yeah, and it would have. Instead serve of the same purpose. Me watch an eight minute long mini movie that was spending a bunch of money on a on a yeah. eight minute mini movie. Like I don't know if they're going to have a direct, make it interesting, make it worthwhile. And I don't know why they couldn't wait a week and put this out during E three. Tying never, it in with Pokemon Company never does E three. Yeah, but why not start? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're too big. They're bigger than E three. It's Pokemon. Yeah, well, <laughs> if they're so if they're so much bigger than E3, this trailer doesn't yeah. this this direct that they ha held doesn't show it. You know, it's just yeah. Oh, that that trailer with the live action bits in that trailer were so boring. Oh, so bad. It was really bad. And I know they want they want to like show that Pokemon is a community and that it brings people together. And it's like we get that. You know, we got that in the sixty other. Of these trailers you've done. <laughs> yeah. Do better. Yeah, do, do better. better. Job. Come on. Come on, Pokemon. <laughs> the, f the freaking Pokedex in Sun and Moon looks like the Switch. Why isn't it on the Switch? Yeah. Well, I still think they're eventually going to announce the uh, next gen is going to be on the Switch, the stars or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of uh, rumors and things about that where it takes place. It's... It's a sequel to Sun and Moon set about 10 years later, and you go to – but it's set in Kanto, but it features a lot of the characters from Sun and Moon. Huh. Which, given the, the ending to uh, Sun and Moon, makes sense. Even though you I haven't, you haven't, you haven't gotten there, so it. I'm not going to go any yeah. further. But, yeah, given the ending that it does, it makes a little bit of sense. Um, yeah, I'm just underwhelmed. I think that's I think that's the best way to describe it for me is yeah. just underwhelmed. It was a snooze fest. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not worth rushing around trying to you know find a way to watch it at ten a.m. Yeah, for eight minutes of nothing. 
anyway, uh, speaking of Pokemon stuff, there's some other Pokemon Go news, I guess. They're doing, it's like your um, year anniversary or something like that. Yeah, they're doing a big multiplayer update, I guess, to the point where they're shutting down the gyms. Good. They need to be fixed. Yeah, because they're not fun. No, I don't do them because they are no fun. Yeah. To be honest, I don't use the app super often anymore. No, I haven't opened it in a long time. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's still. I still think it's a good game. It's a good game. Yeah, it has a lot of flaws that could easily be fixed. Sure. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I'll I'll crack it open every once in a while if I'm not if I'm walking around and need something to distract myself with while I'm yeah. walking. If uh, if they revamp the entire battle system, mm-hmm. I'd definitely be interested in checking it out again. Trading would be nice. Yeah. Trading would be nice. They've promised that since it's come out, and they haven't. Peer-to-peer battling would be very nice. Yeah. If they could fix the speed tracker on the app, that would be great, because I used to open it up when I would bike and get mileage, miles that way. Uh, it's I'm Not only <laughs> do I slower. bike... <laughs> Not only do I bike too fast, at times I run too fast. It thinks I'm in a moving vehicle, and, and it locks me out. <laughs> it's a little overzealous. Just a, just a little tiny bit. And I understand they're trying to be, like, with the safety and whatever, but I don't know. I miss that golden age of Pokemon Go when, like, everybody and their Every- brother was playing it. Oh, it man. So cool. and, you could just, and you could just run into groups of people. It was so cool. Oh, yeah, like a month ago? Yeah, or a year ago. Um, for, yeah. about a, for about a month a year, a year ago. ago. Yes. That's what I meant to say. It was so cool to it was see great. that many people out. Mm. Oh, yeah. And you could hear people, there's a squirtle over there. There's a squirtle over there. Oh, yeah. Um, one afternoon, I went down to High Banks, and there were just roving bands of oh, Pokemon yeah. trainers. Um, in fact, I remember there was this one group of uh of uh older guys in front of me just walking and one of them was just going man i don't know why the hell are we walking around a a woods and you know three o'clock in the afternoon on a saturday and all this stuff just talking back and forth five seconds later later, one goes there's a squirtle there's a squirtle over there and they they all took take off running so and (laughs) it it was great it was like the the whole like dichotomy of like i'm too old for this no i'm not (laughs) (laughs) i need i need this digital make-believe monster yeah like nothing like that will ever happen again. No, it was so weird and such a interesting time. Int- yeah, it was, <laughs> it was and then they ruined it. It was and, beautiful. <laughs> and then they ruined it and pushed everyone away by not not fixing things fast enough and not and getting rid of the tracker. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know. Well, the the tr- the fixed tracker is actually kind of nice because now if you're close to stops, um, the tracker area will show you mons that are close to like the stops and it pulls up the picture that is associated with that stop yeah that's pretty helpful as long as you're near things yeah when you're not it's just kind of take a guess that's basically the whole game though if you're not near something then yeah 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 but you know i still think it's a fun game like i said i'll crack it open every now and again and i think if they were what they really need is one really really good event to bring everyone out and fix the battles. And fix the battles. Yeah, they definitely need to do that. Speaking of one big event, aren't they doing like a um, something in Chicago? In Chicago, I forget the exact day. Yeah. It's sometime this month, though. It wasn't as far away as you would think. Mm. They would announce something like this. But they're doing Pokemon Go Fest in a park in Chicago. And I'm sure I'm almost 100% positive that's going to be the first time they unleash a legendary Pokemon. More than likely. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want a legendary, you know, drive to Chicago. Yeah. So do you think that it'll match the their live action trailer from when U two was in Times Square and everyone was battling it at the same time or it, it'll be it'll probably be similar in concept, but it's not nothing is ever gonna be as cool <laughs> as that trailer was. That trailer was so hype. It was so rad. <laughs> yeah. It basically had everyone convinced that Pokemon was going to be real in six months. (laughs) The scientists have cracked the genetic code. They have made real live actual Pokemon. Isn't that what Mewtwo fought against? Yeah, that was the whole... Yeah, well, (laughs) yes. That whole, like... That whole trailer was so good that it made people's expectations for the game way too high. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Why isn't this exactly like Pokemon but real life? (laughs) Like, I don't know, because that's impossible. Yeah. 
I don't, oh, I don't know what they can do to fix the battle system, though, because they can't make it exactly like the game. No, they can't do that. Because that, that'll eat into sales of the, of the game. game. Yeah. But they can't keep it the way it is now because it, it's, it's garbage. broken and yeah. it's not fun. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe. You know, almost just having two Pokemon show up and it automatically choosing a winner or a loser is more fun than what they yeah. have now. Just look at base stats and... <laughs> yeah, just doing that would be more fun yeah. than whatever it is now. Base stats does. and type advantage, and then hmm. you're done, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Because now it's like tap and swipe and hold, and it doesn't react in time. Yeah, and... if you have any kind of connectivity issues, it'll just lock <laughs> you out. and Yeah. I'll be excited for the how they find that to find out how they find that solution. Oh yeah, I'll 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 check that out. Sure, <laughs> why not? I mean, it's free. <laughs> it maybe it doesn't cost anything. So, turn-based you know. battles, but you only have two moves. That would be cool. Still, I think it might take a little too long if you're supposed to be like walking around and stuff. That's true. They want something that goes just kind of quick. I think maybe the matching the matchups, like you mentioned, that eh, that would probably work. Well, hey, talking about Nintendo stuff, they uh, started. They broke ground in Japan on uh, Super Nintendo World, the Universal Studios theme park attraction. Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Excited. Yeah. I they, mean, there's a little video that shows it's a bunch of CG stuff. It, it just looks like Mario. You're walking around Mario Land, which is awesome. It's great. I mean, it's in Japan, so I will probably never see it. Although it's coming to Orlando too. Well, that yeah, they're both getting one. Yeah, I don't know the time frame on the American <laughs> one. The Japan one's supposed to be open by 2020. Okay, and they have guaranteed a Mario Kart ride. Perfect. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like one of the most like I don't want to say boring, but like. Easy, re- easy yeah. Mario thing to do. That's a layup. That's a layup yeah. idea. <laughs> Like, you you could go to Magic Mountain and probably have a very similar experience. More than likely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've thought about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got Mario Golf, and then they just put in a golf course. Oh, yeah, a little putt like, yeah, place. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool, actually. A Mario I'd be down go- for a Mario putt putt. Oh, Mario putt putt, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that'd be so good. Yeah, that'd be rad. The Mario Slugger's batting cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I'd, It'd be worth it for me just to, like, walk around the Mario-themed area. Are you kidding? That'd be awesome. Yeah. You know there would be a restaurant that is built up to look like the castle at the end of, like, stage 1-1 in Mario. Oh, they'll probably have Peach's Castle in there. And Peach's Castle, yeah, yeah. They could do a whole Disney thing. They could. <laughs> well, if they if they, if they they treat it uh, similar to the way they treated the magical world of – or the wizarding world of Harry Potter – because those – that park down in, in Florida, I went there last year, and it is uh, phenomenal, like unbelievably good. You can go inside of Hogwarts. Like there's a ride <laughs> inside of Hogwarts, and it is super great. What what rides would you most want at Super Nintendo World? Uh, oh, gosh. Um, also, Pokemon is probably not part of the No, deal. probably not. This is we're, – we're talking uh, first party – Nintendo license, so there's got to be a, a Zelda thing, right? Yeah, but what would you do for a Zelda ride? Oh man, maybe it won't be a ride. Maybe it'll be more of an attraction. Like Kosai has this uh, ruins where you get like go in and like investigate. They used things. to. They don't have that anymore. Well, they don't anymore. Yeah, I haven't been in a while. So, <laughs> oh, how about the uh, the the Legends of Zelda Zora's Domain log log ride? Log view. <laughs> With Prince Sidon. Yes, yeah. Prince Sidon is the car. Yeah, <laughs> with a b- giant shark boy face yeah. right on the front. <laughs> and a hand going the, like, with the thumbs flex. Up. Thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So, the so the, the log flume, Legends of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Zora's <laughs> Domain Zora's Ride. Zora's Domain Ride. Um, chances are they'll probably have one of those 3D, like, you put on the 3D glasses and they just take you on, like, a simple cart right around. Like the Spider-Man ride, but from oh, Metroid. Yeah. So, yeah. you're fighting Ridley. Actually, there's um, in in uh, the park now. There's a uh, old Men in Black one where you're in a cart and you have guns and you're shooting oh, at, yeah, the, at the monsters that. as you go, yeah. and you tally up the score. So maybe you have like an arm cannon on the front of a cart and you swivel around and shoot at 
at the Space Pirates and that Ridley. Is, if they do anything Metroid related at all, it'll probably, it'll probably be Federation Force. Yeah, yeah Federation Force ride. <laughs> uh, of course, there'll be a lot of Mario stuff. Do you suppose there's going to be any? Um, I don't know, like Pikmin. Pro- I mean, that's. That's Miyamoto's baby. Yeah, so, so probably maybe maybe a, a, a children's playground area based on Pikmin. Man, just a Mario themed children's playground would be amazing. Oh, that would be really oh, yeah, cool. Crawling through warp pipes. And yeah, out when I was a little kid, every playground was a Mario themed playground <laughs> in my head. <laughs> uh, swing your arms from side to side. Yeah. But in the Prospect Park, they have that big pipe on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I I'm familiar. <laughs> yeah. You better believe every time I went into that as a kid, I was like, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what kind of themed restaurants there are? Because in the Simpsons land, like, a lot of the buildings just kind of open up into big themed, like, Frusty Burger and the um, Fisherman's Wharf or whatever. <laughs> Game and Watch Chef <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Burger Time. Burger Time's it's not Burger- Nintendo. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Data East. All right. Or is it Data East? It's Data East. It's Data East, yeah. okay. Yeah. I Princess can't... Peach's Bakery. Yeah. You got to be able to get a cake from you Princess Peach. You got to get Peach. a cake from Princess <laughs> Peach, yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of any, like, Yoshi's Cookies. Yeah, Yoshi's Cookies. <laughs> there we go. That's a good one. That's a deep cut. <laughs> Will we have a Dr. Mario, like, first aid tent? Yeah. <laughs> If that plays in there on a loop. Uh-huh. Stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. And the person inside is slowly losing their mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a yeah. Yoshi carousel. Sure. That'd be cool. Yeah. Wouldn't have to be just Yoshi. Put Mario creatures uh, on a, a in of, a carousel. Just, that'd be cool. Just have a bunch of Yoshis. Different colored Yoshis. Yeah. A Yoshi. Uh, Shy Lake, guys. Lakitu Cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Bullet Bill, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, the caterpillar. Yeah, Wiggler. Oh, I could picture the the Bullet Bill, like you know that uh that flying where it kind of raises you up and then turns to the side and you kind of spin around like at an oh, angle kind of thing. That would work with uh, Donkey Kong too, oh, yeah. like so, fine themed. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, I was thinking that like for like a jungle gym or like a Donkey Kong minecart ride. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a given too. That does seem really easy. Yeah. Uh, Oh man, I could play the some sweet, sweet David Wise Donkey Kong Country music. There we go. It. Yeah. Will we get any stage shows? Like <laughs> like weird Mario stage shows or like the like uh I know this is Disney, but like the uh like the uh, Star Wars experience. Like the Star Wars experience or like the the Muppet theater oh. <laughs> where you just kinda sit and things like the four D experience where things kinda fly at you. <laughs> I wonder if they'll have one of those rides where, like, you w- watch the movie and the seat moves around. Oh, that would be cool. Yes, yeah, so that's that's what I'm thinking. With yeah. The, yeah. Hmm. There's got to be an arcade, right? Yeah. Like, there's got to be an arcade. Oh, well, yeah. But it only has old Nintendo arcade machines in it. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Oh, Luigi's, Luigi's Haunted Mansion, Mansion. Haunted Mansion. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's... Actually, that that would be even better than... You scrap my idea for the, the Metroid, like, arm buster thing. <laughs> You're... In Luigi's Haunted Mansion, and your cart has the the Ecto Buster, or whatever. The 2000. Poltergust. The Poltergust, yeah. Hmm. Oh man, could you imagine a Mario Sunshine water area? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, with like a like a like a big statue of Mario like floating above you with like flood just spraying mm-hmm. water down. <laughs> there wouldn't be a section for Animal Crossing, but there is an Isabel and a villager just wandering around. Oh, I hope there's a lot of mascots. Yeah, I hope there are a ton of mascots too. Those poor, poor souls. How would you feel about Nintendo mascots, Samantha? I don't know. I know you hate mascots. <laughs> I'd have to see, see them first. See, we're saying that, and all I can think of is the original Smash Brothers TV commercial, <laughs> where it's just a bunch of people in Nintendo mascot costumes beating the crud out of each other. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, what was that song? I know the so song. So happy yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope it has a Nintendo World store. Oh, oh yeah. It would have to. It would Every gift would shop is going to be a gold mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Will there be coins just floating in the air for you to grab? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I imagine there'd be a bunch of street lights like that look like uh, question blocks or something. 
Oh, yeah. The Main Street Parade featuring Wario and Waluigi. <laughs> oh, no. Just mugging and shaking their fist at the crowds. Oh, God. Will there be Wario and Waluigi mascots? I hope so. Around? They would – there was a <laughs> – to get a Waluigi mascot, they would need someone with a very specific body type. <laughs> like everyone else can be put in a costume. Waluigi would need a v- he need to be like eight feet tall. No, it'd just be a, it'd just be and a, only weigh a hundred pounds. It'd just be a dude in a drywall stilts. <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah, that's more of a, probably. <laughs> Oh, oh that'd be horrifying! <laughs> the cold, dead eyes of a giant Waluigi face. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder if they'll do anything with arms. Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's a pretty new maybe, IP. Maybe, maybe that'd be like in the arcade, like an like an arms tournament or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, ooh, could you imagine like a Bowser's Castle ride? That'd be cool. <laughs> so, something like like Disney's Soarin' ride, where you're flying above California, but you're it's pilot wings. Oh uh, yeah, it's just, it's just pilot wings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's too much too much of a deep cut for people. <laughs> what, people pilot love, wings. People yeah. love pi- pilot wings. Okay, nobody likes pilot wings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not pilot wings. How about um, Star Fox? Oh yeah, there's. I think a Star Fox ride of some kind is likely. Yeah, probably a roller coaster. A Star oh, Fox yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Do a but, barrel roll. But when yeah. you when you strap in, it's just like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I would have to do that as you were leaving the yeah. station. Good luck. Oh man, it would be like a uh, um, space mountain, so it's all indoors. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, um, or disaster transport. Uh, God rest the original itself. one. Yeah, yeah, the no. actual one. It's gone. Well, yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Like the way it used to be before they started gutting everything out of it. I like that one. Yeah. Plus, it was the it was the air conditioned indoor coaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get away from the heat. Yeah. So many things they could do. Oh yeah. So this is a good idea. Yeah. What, what we're saying is this is a good idea that they Ooh, did. For Halloween, they could have like a Castlevania event. That's, not That's Konami. Oh, worry. Yeah. Nice try, though. They could I have know. a Luigi's Mansion event. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the boo house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, we are actually pretty close to time here, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you all for listening. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can also find us at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash nerd overload radio. Yeah. That's it. Hey, it's okay. You've been gone a couple weeks. It's cool. You're rusty. It's all good. You're rusty. You'll get it next time. <laughs> <laughs> you can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. What thing do I say? You can tweet at us. <laughs> we're, all, we're all rusty. It's early. <laughs> you can tweet at us at nerd underscore overload and you can follow our uh, YouTube channel, Nerd Overload TV. That's right. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher, so check us out over there. And uh, again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Pizza out. Poopy pants.